Hi, this is Robert, and I am at what I consider probably the most crucial step of uh, uh, powering up the amplifier. This is the initial power up for each channel. And uh, basically, I'm going to monitor the output. Uh, I'm going to set my scope to DC millivolts. Hopefully you can see it. Let's see, I think it'll be in the picture. We'll see. But uh, we're, uh, this is a push-pull amplifier, so it's balanced. There are two sections. And if you look at the, uh, there it is. The schematic. You have a positive rail, negative rail, and the function of the amplifier is a balance between the two rails, and the output should be close to zero. Uh, if there is any uh, voltage on the output, uh, it's referred to as DC offset, and that's what I'm going to be monitoring for as I power the amplifier up. Now the bias pots have not been touched at all. So uh, the amplifier won't be biased into Class A at this time. It's, uh, it will barely be an AB amplifier, probably closer to Class B, come to think of it. But what we're going to do uh, is bring the variac up, and we'll monitor the uh, voltage on the output. Now, I have fuses in the back. They are two amp slow blow types, and that's what I normally use on my preamps. So these are going to be grotesquely undersized for a power amplifier. It should be closer to 10 amp slow blow. Uh, I have some on order, but uh, right now, I think with the bias turned all the way down as it is, we should be able to at least get. Uh, see if uh, they'll hold up uh, with both amplifier channels going in the uh, idle state. Hopefully that made sense. But I've already done the right channel. We're going to do the left channel now. And what we don't want to see is this voltage take off towards one of the supply rails. So we bring it up and... With the other one, as I crept it up, it did not go over a millivolt, which was good to see. Okay, so I'm seeing uh, the supply LEDs come up. Right now we're at negative 0.6, and we're at about 40% on the Variac. Fingers crossed, breath held. But it's all a matter of balance with a push-pull amplifier. If uh, one of the outputs is shorted in some way, or if it's uh, the insulator separating it from the heat sink has been punched through by a piece of dirt or something, then it throws the whole uh, balance off. And that's when you have trouble. Uh, I have the input shorted. Uh, I have some shorting plugs in there. And I also have uh, loads on the output. Uh, they're dirt cheap. Uh, uh, Parts Express had some 8 ohm wire wound uh, <laughs> resistors uh, rated 10 watt. I've got a four of them in series parallel on each channel. So I got eight ohms at 40 watts on the output there. So we're looking quite good. If you notice, we're under 0 point, or 0 0.01, pardon me, 0 0.1 millivolt, which is very nice. That's what I want to see. We have both channels powered up and Again, going to check to see if anything's getting hot. <laughs> Probably.
probably be a little warm now because they're actually the rectifiers actually are supplying a load to the output devices but because the bias current is turned so far down we shouldn't be seeing any significant heat generated but this is good uh, the breathe the big sigh of relief here uh, this at least tells me that uh, uh, I got all the parts in right fingers crossed hopefully or at least uh, they're right enough that it's not throwing the offset off. Which I think that means that uh, everything is pretty much as it needs to be. So that's good. Uh, before I do any bias tests, I will need to uh, get bigger fuses for it, of course. Because I'm sure those will pop the minute I try and crank the bias up. Also, the thermistors. I don't know if you can see the thermistors. But uh, there. There's one of the thermistors. And I've got them bent. And they're more or less making contact with that big washer there. But uh, I'm probably going to have to figure out some way to glue them down. Possibly uh, with silicone seal and a piece of tape. Just so I want them to be in close, intimate contact with that uh, uh, that washer, if I can. Because uh, the thermistors are part of the thermal tracking. Oh, if you have, there you go. I should have put this light up instead of the uh, little ones I've got going. But the thermistors are part of the thermal tracking network, and they'll actually crank the bias back a little as the amplifier heats up. Uh, this is vital in a solid state amp because uh, they almost all have a positive temperature coefficient, which means the hotter they get, the more current they conduct. The more current they conduct, the hotter they get. And uh, it can snowball into what's known as thermal runaway, where the, uh, the amplifier just burns itself up. And uh, solid state devices were, uh, uh, when the uh, switch was made from tubes to solid state uh, equipment in the uh, early mid-60s, uh, the uh, traditional tube guys would always make fun of the solid state gear because it would just destroy itself uh, if uh, it got too hot. And uh, so uh, a lot of study was done into the uh, protection devices like thermal tracking with thermistors and so on in order to... Uh, um, protect the devices. In a solid, or pardon me, in a Class A amplifier, it is probably, uh, I guess it's just as important. I know a Class A amplifier is going to get hot. That's its nature. So a lot of the biasing on this is going to be fussy. You're going to crank it up a little and let the thing heat up to where it's going to go. And then see if it's too much, whether you have to back it off or whatever. So it's going to be a complicated procedure uh, doing this. And I'm definitely going to have to read up on the uh, uh, notes. Not only uh, uh, Nelson Pass's articles on the... Uh, uh, amplifier, but also uh, 6L6's uh, construction guide that's on the uh, DIY Audio website. And hopefully that will give me enough knowledge to enter into this without having a disastrous outcome. But I am very pleased. So far, uh, all the uh, un... Uh, all the caution I took building this, all the excessive attention to detail that made it kind of uh, 
tedious and tiresome for me is uh, it looks like it's uh, paying off dividends here and that uh, knock on wood I am not seeing any serious problems at this point and hopefully that continues as we start cranking the bias up and enter class A land So that'll do it for now. Uh...